everyone, my name is Callie, and I'd like to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you the method that I use to go about picking out equipment such as barrels. Corbin Clarinet Products has been so kind and has actually offered to replace this barrel that I have. It's the very first generation barrel of the Royal Global Polar Polaris Adjustable Barrel. But before I get into why this is the first generation and I'm testing out second generation barrels, um, I just want to cover a couple of things. First of all, many of you already know, I've been posting like crazy during this whole pandemic and I'm loving it. So I'm going to keep it going and if you guys want to help me on this process of, of keeping things going, feel free to support me on Patreon. Now. If you're not interested in the Patreon community and you're like, Kelly, I like what you're doing and I just want to take private lessons online, I'm teaching lessons all summer. So go ahead and shoot me an email. We can set up some online lessons and, and you know, I'd love to work with anybody who is enthusiastic enough to be seeking answers on YouTube. So please be sure to reach out. Now, a lot of people have asked and have expressed interest in, in these adjustable barrels. Everybody's like, oh, where'd you get it? And I think a lot of people think I have the Zoom barrel. The Zoom barrel is great. It sounds fantastic. It's just not for me. Um, there are people who sound great on the Zoom barrels and they sound terrible on these. It's the complete opposite. Um, I sound very, very bright on the Zoom barrels, at least at this point in my life. It may change someday. But at this point, I'm not a huge fan. So I'm sticking with these. I think I'm probably among one of the first people who will be trying these out with a Yamaha CSVR. Um, so I think that the tuning works really well with the Yamaha CSVR. Now, the, the whole thing behind this adjustable barrel movement is that if, if you are, if you're sharp, um, and you pull out. That affects the quality of sound, the evenness, it even affects the intonation tendencies of the instrument and um, and also the resistance. The feel, it, it, it changes everything just because you have a gap in the bore. So the adjustable barrels actually um, minimize that gap and they allow you to get that smooth, beautiful, even sound um, with with all of you know all of the different lengths that you use for um, for tuning, also <laughs> it's a lot easier in the middle of a concert to just go whoop than it is to go put in a ring and then go and then your clarinet sits there for 30 minutes and you're like oh well gotta take it out and like that so it's a lot easier to sound good and when you're when you're tuning so. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. I like using this ligature um, with the vertical plates um, when I'm testing out barrels. And that's because this ligature stays put. You put it on, it's not going to move anywhere. And you want to make sure that your reed, your mouthpiece ligature are all the same, that things don't move around when you go from one piece of equipment to the other. You want to make sure you are comparing the equipment and not the reed placement. Lastly, I am not a huge expert on what the different metals do for these barrels. Silver supposed to be a bit more projected. Um, rose gold, not really sure entirely what this one is supposed to be, um, but I think it's a little bit more free blowing in my opinion. The gold one is a little more resistant feeling and then the black nickel nice and rich or supposedly nice and rich and warm and um, I have these divided into two different groups now over here is the stock barrel for um, is the stock bore sorry over here's the stock bore between um, for for the Polaris barrel and so this is what they're made um, they're, they're just made with these right so um, they're great. They're sounding good. Um, these over here are Brian Corbin's own special design inside the bore. And so he actually calls this the Corbin traditional bore. And if you like the Corbin traditional bore, you actually have to, at, at this time anyway, you have to actually special order it from him. Now the first generation barrel, um, is 
the one that I have right now. And I actually bought this one to match my buffet. And it was a great improvement on the buffet. However, the turning mechanism on this is, oh, Jesus. Okay, I did not do that on purpose. It's, it's a bit stiff. Um, it's, it's, the inside is, uh, let's see, it's metal against wood when it opens and closes the turning mechanism. And so I think sometimes when the weather changes, it creates friction between the two surfaces. Um, so they uh, changed the design of this a little bit. And now, check it out. It's a nice, you can't tell, but it feels so smooth. And you can actually go all the way down on these, which this is about, you can't even tell, but this is about as far closed as I can get this one. And this one, you can close it all the way. And um, yeah, it's really, it's really quite nice. Very fluid, very nice going up and down. Yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. They changed the design of the inside so that it's metal against metal, but, the, the part that the wind actually goes through is still wood. So you still get that sound, that sound quality of wood, I guess, as you blow through the instrument. Um, and the other thing that makes the Polaris barrels different from a lot of the other adjustable ones out there is that they're made from a solid piece of granadilla wood. Like the whole thing is cut out of that and built out of that, which I think is pretty darn special. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into how I go about testing barrels. So there are seven different categories that I look at when I'm picking out equipment. So the first thing I think about is the feel of the equipment. So if I don't like how it feels to play, uh, that out the door, I'm done. So from the very first note, if I hate it, it's gone. Second is, is the sound quality. So, and, and as we go through this video, you may hear me describing some of this equipment as being rich or dull or dead or, or vibrant or colorful. And so those are some of the things that I'll do whenever I'm testing out equipment. Just find some adjectives to describe the things that I'm testing. Now if it, passed, uh, if it passes the sound quality, then I also check for evenness and I listen to see how the clarinet does in the different ranges of the instrument. Now it may feel great when you're playing the, the low register of the instrument and you're going along and you're trying to be consistent from the lowest to the highest note and then all of a sudden one, like one thing that'll really stick out to me is um, like F sharp, like the, the middle finger F sharp or high C. Those are two notes that will sometimes just kind of hit me the wrong way. Um, another one is open G. Um, it's kind of a, a weird, a weird note, right? So you all know this. So that's evenness. You want to make sure that the sound and the feel and the quality is, is even from bottom to top. Uh, the next thing, if it passes that, I, I try to get a feel for resonance and that's a little bit difficult if you're testing in a smaller space um, and this goes right into the fifth point projection. Um, you know, I, I try to do the best I can. I've, I've been playing for a long time so I have a pretty good idea of what feels like it would be good in a, in a larger space or, or not. Um, but if you're not sure, see if you can test you can test your equipment in a larger space than you know just a tiny practice room or a small bedroom. Um, you know maybe go out into your living room or, or if you have you know a larger basement or something or even a church would be great. So you want to listen for you know the next one, two, three, four, five, number four and five in a larger space. Now if it passes those and I'm like, oh man, the sound, evenness, all of this is great. I actually check after that, um, one of the last things, articulation. So articulation and feel for me are very interconnected. If, if, I'm, if I'm blowing a certain way and I really like how it sounds, I can just sense that the articulation is gonna be really good. But if I have to work really hard to get a nice, good sound and make it feel good, articulation probably won't be great. So I, I save articulation for last um, because usually if all of the other uh, six steps are, are checked off, articulation will be fine. And then at the very end, I check for intonation. 
Now, right now, it's actually really hot in my apartment. It's like 85 degrees. I need to put the AC in, but I just haven't. It's like the first hot day Chicago has had. So I'm going to be a little bit sharp. But the thing that I, I listen for is, you know, um, how 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 sharp is it? I mean, this goes up to 68 millimeters. That's pretty long. I'm also playing on a 13 series mouthpiece, which is pretty low. So that being said, if I am going so far out on one of these barrels that it just it wants to come apart, although I haven't tried that because these have been pretty in tune so far, um, <laughs> Uh, that's a problem. So you want to make sure that the intonation is within the range that you are tuning to. So obviously, like a lot of orchestras in the U.S., we tune to 440, um, but many other parts of the world tune to 442. So you want to make sure that you get equipment that will help you tune the most easily to what you know your, um, your ensemble will tune to. So what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm not going to talk in between, uh, in between testing all of these barrels. I'm going to play a three octave chromatic scale from low E to high E. And then I'm going to do a two octave C major scale once legato, all slurred, and once articulated uh, to give you an idea of the sound, articulation, and evenness between all of these different barrels. <laughs>
right guys, so that is your example of, of how I go about testing out these barrels. Um, first impressions for me are always a really big deal from the very first note I play. If I don't like it, it's out the door. Now, um, I uh, my favorites, I would be curious to know what you guys think of all these things, um, but in terms of feel, how this resonates in the space, um, at this time, you know, you guys are listening with the microphone about two or three feet away from me. So um, in, in the larger space that I'm playing in, um, it, the ones that feel the best to me right now are the stock bore, um, what is this, black nickel, and the Corbin traditional bore, um, silver. And um, yeah, I'm probably gonna go with this one because uh, the articulation feels so clean and refined and I have I can, I can just like totally relax while I play this both of them really I can just kind of relax when I play them and I feel like I can sound pretty even without having to try too hard um, and which is very important. So I hope you guys find this information useful. Corbin Clarinet Products did give me a promo code to use in the description of this video so be sure to check it out if you guys are interested in buying any of these. Um, I'm not getting commission from this, um, you know, I'm just doing it because um, they sent me all of these to try out and I was like, sure, let's do this. Thank you so much for watching my video on how to pick out clarinet equipment. I hope you guys find this useful. If you guys have any tips or tricks or anything that you do as well when you're trying out equipment, please be sure to leave them in the description or in the comments below so we can all learn from each other. Thank you so much for watching and as always, happy practicing.